so yesterday I was really done with derivatives of logarithms. That was all I wanted to say. Now, uh, if you look, so I'm skipping 3.8 because uh, it's not there. If you go on the syllabus, um, if you go on the syllabus and you ugh, idle the zoom BS, uh, you see, you go to the, to the syllabus over here and it says, this topic should really be covered in the differential equations classes, which I agree with. Um, doesn't, I don't know, it's, it's an interesting topic, section 3.8, but doesn't really fit in that class all that well. Um, all that much, I don't know. Uh, so let's move on to this topic gives the students some trouble because they do not understand the channel. See what that's about. So um, we're now on 3.9, uh, which is about related rate problems. Um, so, um, what are related rate problems? Uh, well, first of all, they're they're worth problems. So, um, we're gonna have to read some English. I don't know how you feel about that. It's gonna be some reading comprehension involved. Um, we're gonna have to, I don't know, things are not gonna be straightforward. <clears throat> so, um, so what is her later rate, rates problem? Um, So, these are problems where we are given some quantities that are related to each other. Um, we know at what speed some of them are changing and we are asked uh, at what speed others are changing. And to solve them, we use a relation that there is between these quantities. Um, so obviously, I'm about to do an example, but uh, before I do that, uh, how do we how do we solve these problems? Um, well. You might be surprised to uh, see me say, read the problem carefully. Um, that's really important and it seems obvious, but somehow, I don't know. I have a fear of how many people are not gonna read the homework problem for this week carefully. And I said, do five derivatives, but then you're gonna do, try to do 10. I'd be surprised that some of them are impossible, even though I told you they were. Um, so, so word problems are confusing, but I think the best way around the confusion is to write down like, all the information the most in the most organized way you can possibly you can possibly achieve. Um, so you read everything carefully, you identify what quantities are known and which are the ones we want. Uh, you make notation. If you're not told that the volume is V, probably you want to call the volume V or something. <clears throat> so you can write formulas. Um, 
and then you find the relation or relations between the quantities. And then once you have a relation, so a relation is an equation, something like, um, and in relation, I don't know, the volume of a cylinder, that's a formula, V equals four, V equals pi R squared H. Uh, and once you have an equation, you, uh, you simply use differentiation to get a relation between the, um, derivatives of the quantities involved. So normally these are the derivatives, derivatives respect to time. Um, and then solve this to to get the derivative you're looking for. So um, honestly, if you make it through step four, the rest, I mean, could be complicated, but it's algebra, you know, it's, there's, things can be complicated, but at least there's only one course of action at every step. Um, on the other hand, Reading the problem carefully, identifying what is known and which isn't, and finding a relation between those things, and choosing like which things to go by which letter, those are decisions where there's more than one course of action. Um, that means um, that means to me, I think it means this farther. Okay, so that's. I mean, that's all there is to the theory of it. Now the point is to do a thousand of these, and then once you do a thousand of these. That's like a movie that you weren't even born for. Wait, I don't know what trilogy that's for. Can you go back for a quick second? Um, let me know. <clears throat> so let me copy and paste the problem I want to do. Okay. All right. So, um, so this is um, this is the first problem in the book. Um, honestly, they're all um, they're all sort of similar. Um, oh, <laughs> the mm, so annoying. I draw in one place and it it appears in another. So this is supposed to say this is supposed to say hmm, what are you doing? Stop it. Uh, one hundred cubic centimeters per second. Um, I was, I thought, this problem is, um, this problem is in metric units, and you might be upset by that, but um, when there's a volume and a length, and if you, and since um, American units are completely insane, um, oh, here you go, my history, uh, I have no idea. Like, there's, there's just nothing reasonable that wouldn't give you horrible numbers um, with uh, you guys as insane quantities. Wait, no, I need cubic something. Cubic feet, cubic inches. Oh, seriously. All right, so we're not going to measure the air in the balloon in, in tablespoons because that's uh, ridiculous. Uh, I'm going to call it a cubic centimeters, which is the volume of a cube of side one centimeter. 
Um, good thing you don't measure time in teaspoons. Like I could, I could see people doing that just to be annoying, like the rest of the imperial unit. Okay, so this is the problem. So, I mean, well, it's always going to be a related rate problem, but is this a related rate problem? Yes, because there are some quantities. There's there's um, there's a balloon, and there's some quantities that it, that's associated with it, like its volume and its radius. There's probably some relation between the volume and the radius. Uh, and I'm telling, uh, I'm being told uh, how fast the volume changes, and I'm being asked how fast the radius changes. So, um, so there's definitely a related rate, rate problem. So, um, step one that I wrote just now is read the problem carefully, um, which um, I don't know how to. I mean, something you do in your head. I don't know how to explain reading carefully, but anyway. Air is being pumped into a spherical balloon so that its volume increases at a rate of 100 centimeters, two cubic centimeters per second. Uh, how fast is the radius of the balloon increasing with its diameter is 50 centimeters. So, um, so let's try to be as organized as humanly possible. What do we know here? Um, I guess the problem should have more information they should have information that is not needed, but they tend to not. So um, probably all the numbers I see here are important. So um, I don't know the volume of the balloon, um, but I should probably call it, call it by a letter. So maybe before I say what is known and what isn't, what quantities are involved? So um, I think um, it's pretty clear that um, since there's not that much to read, uh, there's the volume of the balloon. And there's the radius. And really, I know if I know that the balloon is a sphere, which I was told, uh, I know knowing the radius tells me everything I need to know about its shape. Only one sphere with a given radius or oh, diameter. Oh, I mean, okay, but I hate diameter. Um, so, <clears throat> so maybe I will call this V. And I call I'll call this R. So what do I know? I know uh, well it says here volume increases at a rate. Of 100 cubic centimeters per second. So I'm going to say that V is in cubic centimeters and R is in centimeters because what else would I do? Um, so, what, does, what is this saying in a formula? What is a formula expressing the fact that the volume increases at a rate of 100 cubic centimeters per second? Do you just mean like what the derivative is? Is that what you're asking? Like what we're trying to find? Yeah, I mean, if, if, if we're saying that the volume increases at a rate of something, that's what I mean literally is that the derivative um, uh, the derivative of the volume is 100. 
the derivative is how fast the quantity is changing. So that sentence is just, just this formula. Okay, so that's one thing I know. Um, um, now, the other sentence says that at some point, so this is very important. It's not that, obviously the, the balloon is getting inflated, the radius is not always um, uh, 50 centimeters. Um, it's just at, at, a part, at a particular moment this happened, uh, this happens. If the diameter is 50 centimeters, then, um, you know, formula, well, I don't like the diameter, who likes the diameter? This is just saying that the radius um, is 50. Okay, um, so that's what I know. Um, so in a formula, what do I want? Well, the, I mean, the question is how fast fast is radius increasing? Wouldn't the radius be 25? The diameter is 50? Oh, yeah, thank you so much. No, that doesn't work. Thank you, Miles. So how fast is the radius increasing? Um, so that's what the problem is saying. Now, in letters, what, what, what letter am I looking for? What formula am I looking for? What's the expression that says how fast the radius is increasing? What was the question again? What is th that last sentence I wrote? How fast is the radius increasing? What is that in a formula? Would we have to relate it to the volume of a sphere, right? Um, yeah, but I'm not there yet. I'm just asking, what is the formula for the quantity I'm, I'm looking for? So want to compute would it be R? dr over dt like the derivative of right exactly thank okay. you pascal so i'm looking for dr dt at a particular moment probably i mean if you ever inflated a balloon um you start when you start blowing normally i mean the same amount of air comes out you sort of um air comes out at, at the at the same speed all the time, probably. So dvdt is pretty much the same all the time, but the balloon starts growing very fast at first, and then it kind of grows uh, less fast. So drdt is not always the same. Um, so, but this is at, a, at the particular moment when um, So a particular moment when the radius is 25 centimeters. This is kind of important to keep in mind. Okay, so that's all the quantities involved in the problem, as far as I can tell. Now, the thing uh, you're telling me to do is, well, the, the next step, uh, make notation. So find the relation between the quantities and the, between the quantities. So you already answered that question to me. Uh, how are V and R related? So that is um, the important thing to know here is that there's a formula for the volume of a sphere. Um, and if I didn't know it, I could just Google it.
probably ask whatever ceiling there you have at home that answers your questions. I don't actually, I don't have one. I don't know if they know the volume of a sphere. I'm sure they do. Um, the formula for the volume of the sphere, the formula for the volume of the sphere is um, that the volume is four thirds of pi r cubed. So, like with everything that I wrote here, um, this is now this is now an algebra problem. I don't need to read anything else. Uh, I have a formula relating to letters that are both functions of time. I know some some derivatives between. Uh, I know yeah. I I know some derivatives and ask for some others, but um, basically it's an algebra problem, uh, an implicit differentiation problem. So this has turned into given that v is always four thirds by r cubed and dv dt equals a hundred. Find uh, dr dt when the radius is 25 and dr dt. Uh, no, sorry, I'm trying to find the dt. So that's the problem now. So now I have the equation. I'm going to take the derivative of it. So um, that's everything. Yeah everything. So only one thing to keep in mind, um, there's there's one huge opportunity to mess everything up here. How emphatic can I be? Well, I need to be. Is this warning enough? So um, what you gotta know, what you really, really need to know is that how much can I yell? Um, always take the derivative first and then plug in the values. Um, because if you plug in the values and then you take the derivative, then you're taking derivatives of constants and, and that's just gonna give you zeros. Um, if you make, if, you, if I plug in r equals 25 to that equation right now, so if I, if I make this v equals four thirds by, 25 cubed, then taking derivatives makes this into, well, makes this into zero, it's a constant. And how am I, how, how am I gonna find dr dt from this equation? That just makes no sense. Um, but this is by far the number one way to mess this up. <clears throat> so um, what I gotta do is uh, take the derivative first. Um, so take the derivative respect to time. So on the left side, I just have dv dt. On the right side, I have, um, well, 4 thirds pi is just a constant that's multiplying. So I can just leave it there, not do anything to it. And, and now I have, the derivative of r cubed. Now, if this was the derivative respect to r, that would be three r squared, but it's not, it's the derivative respect to t. Um, so I have to use the general here. Implicit differentiation problems always require me to use the chain rule. So um, the chain rule says, take the derivative, derivative respect to r, multiply by the derivative respect to t of r. So now notice that this is what I'm trying to find. So that's uh, great news. 
Okay, so every time I try to scroll, I move the letters around. Uh, and dr square, dr cubed, dr is just something I can. Now that is the derivative that I can just take. It's three r squared. <clears throat> dr dt. Um, and now let me just, I'm going to simplify because I still want to use this for things. So get rid of that three. Fascinating how four pi r squared is the formula for the surface area of the sphere. Um, okay, so that's to simplify it as I can make it. So now that I took the derivative, I'm gonna move on to, I think, the last step, I guess I forgot to write here. Um, Only once you've taken the derivative, plug in the values you know. Um, plugging in values and solving, you can do this in any order you want, but plugging in values first is easier. So, um, well, there's, there's really no thinking involved here. I have um, dvdt is something I've been told, and at a particular moment that I'm interested in. I know what R is. Uh, so, dv dt is 100 cubic centimeters, R is 25. So, that means that 100 is 4 pi 25 squared uh, dr dt. And then the last step which is solving for what I am trying to find. Um, well, this is um, 400 pies. Sorry, not 400 pies, 75. <clears throat> okay, I think I use another thing, please. Okay, so a hundred. Go back for just a sec. Yeah, let me know. Okay. All right. So, um, I mean, I could use a calculator, but. I have um, trying, you know, uh, trying to exercise my brain a little bit. So, um, I mean, one thing is exercising your brain. Another thing is just multiplying four times twenty-five squared, which I definitely not going to do because I'm. You're going to be as lazy as you can. So I'm going to write this as four times twenty-five times pi, so that this is a hundred. Uh, so now this is going to be drdt is going to be um, 100 divided by 100 times 5 times 25. And the hundreds are going to cross out. They're going to cancel. So drdt is going to be 1 divided by 25 pi. And I'm done. the book of reasoning me. <clears throat> and there you go. That's it. Any questions?
Really? Uh, so, um, can you go back? Uh, so, like, whenever you did, like, the derivative, like, R cubed, where did you get that from? Where did I get what? Uh, so, like, four, like, on the left side, you have four over three pi times the derivative, like, like R cubed. Where did uh -huh. you so why did you take like the derivative of that? The derivative of R cubed? Yeah. That's the power rule. Um, so the derivative of R cubed respect to R, this is exactly the same as writing the derivative of X cubed respect to X. So this would be three times. So the exponent times the one, le uh, one power less, one, subtract one from the exponent and multiply by it. So if the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, that's literally what the power rule is telling me. Uh, then the same, the, the letter doesn't matter. This is going to be the same except with r's instead of x's. Does that make sense? Yeah, I was. I, I don't understand like why you took the derivative of that. Why um, I took the derivative of that? Is it? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't understand that. Because like you have like, you took the derivative of that and then you multiply that by the derivative of like you know, r over t. So when I went from from here to here. Yeah. Well, because I can't take the derivative of r cube respect to t. That I mean. Well, I can, but the only way to do it, so I got to use the chain rule. The, this is um, the way we usually write the chain rule. R cubed is F of G of, of T, where G of T is R and F of T is uh, no, no, F T. Saying f of u. So when you plug in when you plug in g into f, you get r cubed. You plug in r for u. This means uh, plug r for u, you get r cubed. So to take the derivative of this composition, because the derivative is with respect to t, um, I have to do the chain rule. And the chain rule tells me, um, tells me first take the derivative of the outside. So the outside is the, the cube respect to the inside. And then take the derivative of the inside respect to t. Oh, OK. Does that make sense? Yeah. Any other questions? So this is how it always goes in these problems. You have some letters, whatever letters, and you have an expression in them, and you gotta take the derivative respect to time. So you take, if you see like x to the seventh, you would take derivative of x respect to, uh, well, derivative of what you see respect to x, and then multiply by x prime. Okay. Um, well, if there's no more questions, um, let's do another one. Um, so this, is the, this is the second one in the book. Um, it's in this one is an imperial unit, so it's great. We love imperial units. So um, there's a ladder resting on a wall and it's sliding down the wall. Um, and I'm, I know the speed at which the bottom of the ladder is moving. And the question is how fast, if you're at the top of the ladder, how fast are you approaching the round? It's a, it's a very important problem if you're at the top of the ladder. 
Um, so, okay. Um, so one thing that's vital in in such a problem is to draw a picture. Um, and as you can imagine, it's very important that you get a photorealistic ladder. Um, so let's do, so here's a wall. And here's the, no, actually I'm regretting, I'm completely regretting uh, the stupid thing I said about four realistic letters. Um, no, what I want to do is draw the wall as a line. Uh, the floor is another line and the ladder is, they didn't tell me anything, so I assume it's a straight line between the wall and the floor. So, um, okay. This kind of problem, the last problem was kind of obvious. I needed to give a letter to the volume and a letter to either the radius or the diameter. Um, here, I mean, it's a, in, in this picture, there's a lot of distances and angles I could name. And I, I got a, I got a choose carefully probably. So, okay, so, so what now? So what quantities, um, what quantities are involved in this problem? And the derivatives of which quantities are involved in the problem? Six feet, um, I mean, sure that's the quantity, but I care much more than that, I care what is what is six feet? The distance from the bottom of the ladder to the wall. Thank you, Sydney. Yes, the distance from the bottom of the ladder to the wall. So um, I should probably, I feel like I'm gonna give that a letter, uh, D for distance or X for just letter. So um, this is in feet. And if I drew a picture that I understand, which I probably should draw a picture that I understand, I know that this distance in this picture can be found here. So, um, that it? Oh, it should be at least two, otherwise. Um, um, would the rate, would we just count that as the velocity technically or? The rate of what? Uh, the rate at which the ladder slides away. Um, that, like how well, would... That's going to be the derivative of something, but how do you measure a ladder sliding away? Because there's more than one way to measure that. Oh, well, there's length. We know the length of the ladder. Length of the ladder. So that's presumably not changing. Um, so I'm not going to give it a letter because it's just 10 feet. So, um, there's at least one more quantity, um, that's important here. Isn't it just the rate at which it slides away from the wall, one foot per second? Okay, so so what's that the derivative of?
I want to say velocity, but I feel like that's not right. Uh, no, it's not the derivative okay. of velocity. So this is the, the so this is the speed. Um, so it's it's the speed of the bottom of the ladder. So it's the speed at, at, at which x is changing. Uh, if the the bottom is moving one foot one foot per second, that means that x is changing one foot per second. So this is not a new letter. Um, this is the derivative of x respect to time. So what quantity do I want? You're missing that one. Well, it's asking about the derivative of something, but um, if you're sitting at the top of the ladder, um, watching the ground approach fast. Um, there, there is a quantity you care about. Like height? Height, yeah. Um, so there's the height and then there's, so let's just call this Y. And then there's the speed at which the top is falling. Oh, wait, let me, let me, so the height um, is this distance, of course. Uh, and the speed at which I'm falling is the uh, derivative of the height. It's the rate of change of the height. If I'm falling one foot per second, that means that y is going to be decreasing one foot per second. Okay, so that's all the quantities um, in the problem. And now, what is uh, what is known here? Gravity. Uh, we... Yeah, Pascal. Oh, uh, I was just gonna say we like. Do you just want us to say like what quant like? Just like we know the distance from the bottom, we know this um, height of the ladder. We can also find the height of the top of the ladder um, using the other quantities. Well, technically we don't know that, so I guess you can't really include that. What don't we know? Um, I was going to say the height of the, well, we just have to calculate it. It won't take long because it's just, you know, a right triangle. So that technically we know it, the little bit of calculation. Okay. Um, yeah, that was going to be, so I'm going to use that answer after I say, after I get through the things that we know without calculation. Yeah. And then we know this, um, the speed at which X is changing. Uh, so the speed at which x is changing is one, uh, and what else do I know? There's one thing in the problem, in the statements that I haven't written anywhere, uh, and that was given to us. The fact that it's like six feet from the wall. The fact that it's six feet from the wall. So what letter is six feet? X. X, X is six feet. Thank you. Uh, okay, so that's what, I mean, 
I guess known, maybe maybe what I should say is given, because definitely you're right that we know why as well by the Pythagorean theorem, but we know that because we're very smart, not because they told us. Uh, so, so that's all the information in the problem. Um, so what we need to do next, the next step is to find a relation between the letters that I wrote there. So all the letters there are, are X and Y. And you already told me that the relation is that there's a right triangle there. Um, so um, let me redraw the picture a little bit. So there's X, there's Y. And then the relation between X and Y is that this is a right triangle. This is 10 feet. So, um, uh, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem. Um, x squared plus y squared equals uh, 10 squared. So I could use this to solve for y, but the thing is I don't need to at all. And the beauty of implicit differentiation is that I don't need to solve an equation to find derivatives using it. Uh, so let me just, here I said x equals six from before and dx dt equals one. So this is uh, from last page. So I have a relation, I have all the information. Next up is uh, take, take the derivative of both sides. So if I take the derivative um, and then use the chain rule very carefully. So, the derivative of x squared respect to t, not respect to x. That's what I mean by use the chain rule very carefully. Um, if it was respect to, let me, if it was respect to x, it would be 2x, but it's not. I have to do dx squared dx times dx dt. And, and this is the same except for a y instead of a, of uh, an x, and this is a constant, so this is a zero. Okay, so um, I'm gonna finish this Monday. But um, yeah, I don't have time to finish this. So um, I guess a uh, cliffhanger. All right, and, and that's all, well, really not all I got. I have one more problem to finish solving, but all I have time for. So um, have a good weekend. Or ask me questions, or both.